G'day guys, this is Mr. Dunnan here from anytimeeducation.com and today, a real treat, we are talking about mints. Now I'm not talking peppermint or spearmint for my uh, students in my year 12 class, what I'm talking about is beef mints. Now why am I showing you beef mints? Well, oh, reduced. Yes, I'm poor. You know, Tyler DeWitt's got a donate now. Where's mine, YouTube? Gosh, might have set that up. It wasn't long ago, I think about a couple of years ago in Europe, there was that massive controversy that, yes, you think this is beef mince, but in actual fact, it was actually full of horse meat. Disgusting. So today we're gonna to be looking at what were the genetic techniques used to determine that this beef mince actually contained horse. Let's get stuck in. Okay, so today we're gonna to be looking at, in our four part series, is the location. So how do we locate a segment of DNA or a gene of interest in a sample? We use DNA or RNA probes. So that's what we're gonna be looking at today. Location. Okay, in front of me here, we have a sequence of DNA. Now, if you're not sure exactly about DNA, you might like to check out one of our other videos on anytimeeducation.com. It goes through DNA in lots of detail. But basically, DNA is our genetic or our information storage component of cells. It is double-stranded, and it consists of arginine, thymine, guanine, and cytosine. And these can be arranged in any order. Now, the way that DNA probes can work is if we know the sequence, because DNA is universal, it's in every living organism. If we know the sequence within that species, then we can create a probe to test whether that sequence is in our sample of DNA. Okay, so remember if we go back to our original question, does our beef mince actually only contain beef, or maybe does it contain horse? We want to know is if we know the exact sequence or a sequence of horse DNA, so if we know a sequence of horse DNA, we can create a probe and then we can test a sample of DNA to see if that sample actually includes our sequence. So this is a very small sequence, double-stranded, it's got three lines. So what we want to know is, does this sample contain just cow DNA or, you know, is it just beef mince? Or is there additionally some horse DNA in there? That's our ultimate question, okay? So the first step is designing our probe. To be able to design our probe, we must already know um, the sequence or some sequences that are unique to the horse. And I've got that sequence right here, this representation. So here's my DNA probe. It's single-stranded. It's got a complementary sequence to part of horse DNA, okay? And normally it'd be a lot longer than this, but I'm just gonna do it as, what have I got there? Six bases, it probably could be 100 bases long. So you'll notice it's also yellow. That's yellow because I've labeled it in some way. Now I've labeled this DNA probe with a fluorescent marker, but it could also be radioactively labeled as well. So here's my sequence, C-C-A-T-G-C. -C -C. Cytosine, cytosine, arginine, thymine, guanine, guanine. So here's my original sample that I've taken from my beef mints. I'm going to test whether anywhere along here I have this complementary sequence that's going to match up to C-C-A-T-G-G. -G. Now if you're quite familiar with DNA, you know that the sequence we're looking for is going to be G-G-T-A-C-C because that's a complementary sequence. Complementary with an E, not an I. Be careful about that. Okay, so if we scan along our DNA, we're going to be looking for that sequence. And there it is. G-G-T-A-C-C. -C. Okay, so our probe will only bind if it sees that sequence. If it doesn't see that sequence, it won't bind, and we can't see it. 
So that's the theory, but how do we do that in practice? Well, what we have to do is we have to cut up this DNA into segments. And we use um, special enzymes called restriction enzymes that will cut in specific sequences. So we now have hundreds of different restriction enzymes that we've actually taken from bacteria, bacteria that cut in these sequences. So we cut up our DNA, so you might, you might cut here, 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 or here. What we want to be careful is we use restriction enzymes that aren't going to cut in the middle of our segment of DNA that we're looking for. Okay, so imagine these are all cut up, so to speak. We're then going to use this device. Okay, so this device here is what we call a it's, a, it's a gel medium, but we, the process is called gel electrophoresis. So what we do is we put samples of our DNA. We might include samples of DNA that act as our control. So when we cut up um, DNA using our restriction enzymes, they're going to create different lengths of DNA. Now these different lengths of DNA are going to have a um, harder time going through if they're longer, or they're going to have an easier time moving through this gel if they're shorter. Okay, so basically what happens is we run electric current through um, this gel and because our DNA molecules are negatively charged, they will be attracted to the positive end of our gel. So this is sort of a top view um, of our gel electrophoresis setup. So as we apply this current, DNA will move through this, through this gel. The bigger pieces will get caught up at the top and the smaller pieces will move the fastest so they'll be the most down. So we start with the control, which will give us um, set lengths of DNA so we can compare. We might include a um, cow DNA as a control, a horse DNA as a control, and then our sample that we took from our beef mints. Okay. Now what we're looking for is, do any of these, um, once we apply our probe, are any of these sequences going to be highlighted with our probe? Okay, just to recap, our DNA is going to move down depending on its size. If you've seen the Saw movie, imagine that scene where the guy had to sort of rummage his way through all that barbed wire. A smaller person is going to get a little bit further, a fat obese person is going to struggle a little bit more, and they probably won't get through as far. Okay, so we've put our samples in, we've run our gel for about 20 minutes, we've run our gel electrophoresis for 20 minutes, and it's going to separate our DNA. But we can't see it. On this medium okay because DNA is not visible so what we're going to do is we're going to place on top another surface okay An another medium and this medium is going to um, pick up all the DNA fragments and it's going to fix them in place so if we give that a little bit of a rub we can now imagine that the DNA is now being transferred from our gel onto this medium okay now what we can do is we can expose that medium to either maybe a salt solution or some heat to separate that DNA to become single-stranded. We then apply our probe to that DNA sample and we see which areas of that probe are going to stick to. We then either um, apply our UV light or a X-ray to make that probe now visible. And what we're going to see is when we apply the x-ray, we're going to get a band that now lights up. Now that band is because our original sequence from our beef specimen or a beef mint sample did contain a sequence that was complementary to our DNA probe. So our DNA probe binds to that. And now we can say that our beef mints also contains horse DNA. And that's how they got busted. Where else could we use this? Well, we could use this if we know a sequence for maybe a hereditary disease, or we know sequences of parents. We can then apply this process, create a synthetic DNA probe, and then check whether the individual has that same sequence or a complementary sequence. And then they might then be able to get treatment or at least counseling about their life from then on. So DNA probes, extremely helpful if we already know the sequence, we want to see if that sequence exists in our sample and we want to be able to easily identify it using our gel electrophoresis process. Hopefully that was helpful.
If it was, give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and post in the comments section any other questions that you might have. I'm Mr. Dundon from anytimeeducation.com. See you later.